All right, 4.26 a.m. and I still haven't slept yet. And so I have nothing to do. So it's Victorian photo album era uh, time. <laughs> era, era there. Who used to say that? I think Kennedy? I don't know. Well, I'm a New Yorker, so I don't talk Bostonian. But here we go. So we're going to check out this album. Now, the first thing you notice is it's really, really old. And how can you t generally tell a book that was actually uh, made in the 1860s or before? Well, these particular books were smaller in scale. So in the 1870s and on, photo album would be much bigger than this. So the small little ones about this size generally will hold tin types and something known as CDV photos, which were carte de visites. Don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Another telltale sign that you have an early photo album is leather bound, just like this. Um, you'll see this raised leather tooling going through it. And you'll see actually a clip. A lot of them had these little clips on the side that you can actually lock the book and keep it uh, shut. And uh, the spine. So let's turn the spine. And it'll look like a real old book and it'll say album. All right, so some of these photos in here are actually from the 1850s and as late as the 1860s. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of them. Now, when you uh, have a book like this, you have to be very careful because if the spine uh, gets any weaker, the whole book will collapse and the pages will come out. Okay, so this is going to be a very long video. So... I'm going to warn you now, if you have no patience to sit around and hear some chick jabbering, um, there is no need for you to stick around. This is going to be long. Now, I have to be very gentle about how I handle this book. As you can see, the binding is still good in good shape, and we want to keep it that way. So I'm going to actually have to find something to prop up this half of the book. All right, so the first photo we have here is what appears to be a man and a woman dressed in 1860s garb. Uh, you can generally tell by the hairdo. It could be as early as the late 1850s. Don't know, if you know, write in the comments below. But uh, unfortunately, I can't open this up to see if there's names on the backs of these because um, I don't want to risk it. And so here we go. Now we have, uh, yeah, these look like they can be from the 1850s. Um, wow, look at that. And she's got a really cool brooch. She's very, very old. Generally, people in the Victorian era or earlier did not live long lives. They uh, actually uh, died. I think the most popular age was in their 40s. So God forbid I was uh, brought up in this time. I would probably be dead by now. And here's this gentleman. And he's making a stink face. He does not look very happy. And that's uh, quite funny. And here we go. So we got our next page. And uh, we have a little vignette, again, showing us probably about the 1860s. I could be incorrect. It could be earlier. And again, another vignette. And she has really great hair. I really like the way her hair is parted down the center. Um, very, very cool ear bobs and a nice, nice, nice brooch around her neck. I always look at the jewelry because I collect Victorian jewelry. So that's what I'm like actually excited to look at mostly when I see these books. So here we go. We had this guy over here with uh, blue eyes. And blue eyes always look freaky in these old photos. A beard. And there we go. And then we have this lady in a vignette. And you can hear the, uh, you can see the hair is parted down the center, 1860s style. Now, if it was earlier, the ears would have been covered with her hair. So this is probably 1860s. And again, we have uh, what appears to be a brooch around her neckline and some cool looking earrings. Now, Victorian ladies did not like to pierce their ears. They considered it uh, something that was sort of sinful. So a lot of them would have screw back earrings or um, certain kind of earrings that you didn't have to pierce your ears with. Now, this is a great one because the, che the cheeks are tinted. It would cost a lot more money to actually get the photographer to tint your cheeks sometimes as much as the photograph itself. And that is a great image. And now we have this lady and wow. Okay, I really, really, really like her. I think she has a cameo around right by her uh, neck area where the collar is. And I love her dress and look at that. It appears she's got like a pocket watch or a chatelaine chain hanging from her waist. 
and that's a great big balloon or bell-shaped dress. This looks like 1860s to me. And some of these people in here could be actual soldiers. I don't know um, because I'm not taking them out of the book. But here we go. We have this gentleman. And he looks like somebody that would definitely be a soldier. But I could be wrong. And then we have this lady. And what's really, really, really unique about this photo, this uh, beautiful 1860s photo, is note the hair. Um, it looks like some hand-colored flowers um, are in there. Now, generally, of course, we didn't have color photography back then. So that is actually a sight to see. She's wearing a beautiful uh, Civil War-style dress. And there we go with that hair piece that is hand-tinted with a very gothic-looking chair. Really quite cool. All right, so the next photo is a tin type. And look at the hat. You see how it cracked from age? That's crazy. And it was actually a photograph that was on blackened iron, actually not tin. And uh, the, the cheeks are hand tinted. And if you notice, look at the little brooch. They hand painted it with gold gilding uh, or gold gilded paint. And she does not look too happy at all. And here we go with the next image. And it's another lady and she's wearing glasses. And a lot of ladies did not like to wear glasses because it wasn't fashionable. She has nice earrings. And uh, yeah, they considered that very, very unfashionable. Um, and so she didn't really care about fashion, as you can see here. Only old ladies generally wore, elderly ladies would wear glasses. We have this gentleman here, very 1860s looking. And yes, this is like an 1860s, uh, 1860s era dress. And let's check out her jewelry. Can we focus in there? Looks like pearls with some kind of um, maybe cameo, like black glass cameo, or vulcanite, or gutta percha. Don't know. And yes, we have a typical 1860s outfit. She may be a widow. She may be in mourning. And uh, during periods of mourning, at one point they had to wear all black. And as things lightened up, I think in the second or third year, you can actually wear a color. So as you notice, there's white pearls. So she was probably like two years into mourning when that photo was taken. And here we have another uh, equally uh, cool photo. And let's check out the brooch around her neck. Can't really make it out, but it looks like a hair brooch. One of those morning hair brooches, which would have had a glass panel and hair behind it. Really quite cool. Definitely uh, Civil War era. And here we go to the next. And this guy is really quite cool. Wow, look at his eyes. They're very haunting. And uh, it's in a vignette in the center. Certainly around 1860s. And then this one is actually quite delightful. So you don't generally see a full body picture. And uh, around this time, it was mostly people sitting. And you see this bearded man, a very, very, very awesome photo. And here we go. We have another older gentleman with beard and overcoat. Okay, and here we go again. We have another gentleman with beard and a lady seated with a book next to her. And generally when you see a book next to a lady, that meant that she knew how to read and she was uh, from a more uh, middle class or wealthier family. And there we go. And I'm trying to check out the brooch around her neck. That's uh, quite cool. And it definitely looks like the 1860s to me. And here we have another gentleman. Check out the pocket watch chain dangling. And it looks like um, he has a toupee on the top of his head, but we'll never know. And he has some kind of neck beard. And then we have a standing gentleman with a really, really, really cool beard. Look at that beard. That is a great, great image. And then we have another vignette right there in the center. It appears um, his cheeks may have been tinted. And he has mutton chops. And this is telling me 1860s. 
and we have a very, very uh, pretty young girl, and uh, she has uh, bows around her neck, hair parted down the center, which was the style of the 1860s. Towards the 1870s, they started to wear bangs on their forehead. And we have this gentleman here, and look at his beard. That is absolutely cool, and a vignette in the center. Now we have a photo that may have been taking place in the 1870s. As you can tell, the hair gets fuller and more elaborate than the plain parted down the side uh, or center. And look around her neck, she's wearing a choka. Um, very, very, very cool jet beads, whippy jet. And uh, she may be actually a widow. She's wearing all black, but she has a little bit of white on her, on her collar. So she may be in her second year of mourning or third year of mourning. And uh, that's quite sad. So in that age, being a widow. And here we go. Another vignette. 1860s lady. And look at that cool, like, snood in her hair or net. Very, very cool brooch. Nice clothes. And another lady. Uh, this looks like the 1860s. She has something like a, a coronet or braids going in the back of her hair. A cool brooch right around her neck. And there we go. Okay, so next we have this gentleman on the left. And uh, this lady on the right. Let's check out jewelry. And she's got cool, like, I don't know what kind of buttons those are. Uh, great, great uh, enameled uh, brooch around her neck and dangling earrings. And she's got a coronet of braids going around the top of her head. And here's our gentleman. And you wonder if any of these gentlemen were famous people. I don't know. And here we go. We have a, a couple here and a gentleman with a great, great beard. Look at that. And a lady right here. Now, this is probably an earlier photo, possibly the late 1850s. You see how the ears are covered? Um, probably just the beginning of the 1860s. So the ears were covered, the hair parted down the center. We have what looks like a brooch around her neck and a lace collar. That is very, very cool. Okay, we finally have a name. <laughs> and it looks like it says Edward. I can't see that. Carpenter. So we have Edward Carpenter. And if I took this card out and checked where it was taken, I could probably figure out uh, the genealogy on this gentleman and find out who he was. And he's got uh, tinted cheeks. He's got really a great, great outfit on. And uh, he's got like a vest with some kind of cravat. I don't know if you call it that. Or some kind of a tie going around his neck that's silk. And he's a phenomenal photo. And over here, we have a lady, and this looks like it's early. This could be 1850s, late 1850s, early 1860s. And look at her bonnet. That is just phenomenal. And look at her uh, actual jacket, and she's got some kind of cape going around. That is a great, great image. I really love that image. We have another name. And here we go. So it looks like it says Carrie. Carrie. Can't make that out. Can you? Something Ham. H-A-M. Upham. Ulham. Can't tell. Can you tell? Write in the comments below. And here he is. Very, very, very great photo. And next we have another gentleman. Any name? No. But a bearded gen gen uh, gentleman. And he's got a pocket watch uh, chain dangling. Okay, and now we have a tintype. And these tintypes are great when they're in good condition. So we have a seated couple. Now the dress appears to be from the 1870s. And uh, it could possibly be just around right after the Civil War. And the uh, dawn of the 1870s, we have tinted cheeks. If you see there and great great clothes and then we move over to a little baby and hopefully it's not a post-mortem photo 
uh, a lot of uh, actual babies. They had photography where a child would actually be uh, dead, and they took a last photo of it, and they would prop the eyes open sometimes and make them look very alive. And last but not least, we have a name, and here we go. It says Charles something ham um, or Sam. I don't know. Can you tell me? Tell me in the comments below. Or Woolham or Wolf, Wolfeson or I, I can't tell. God, it's terrible when they have terrible uh, penmanship. And this child looks absolutely pissed. It's a tintype, tinted cheeks, and a great overall image. And in the back of the book, it says index. And sadly, nobody's ever filled it out. And this is the end of our Civil War, or possibly earlier, photo album with many, many, many photos in it. I hope you enjoyed. Hopefully, we'll get something else soon going, and we can actually look at more things. Thanks for watching. See you guys all soon, and so long.